Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. Today we are going to talk about design and simulation of full wave control rectifier used for our load. So this is a circuit diagram of a full wave control rectifier. Uh, one half cycle, two thyristors will be conducting once the gate pulse is given. And in the negative half cycle, the remaining two thyristors, that is uh, these two thyristors will start conducting uh, once uh, the uh, gate pulse is given to it. We are using a resistive load in this case. So let's get into the design part of it. So uh, in general, both the cycles it will conduct and we'll be having an output voltage across the load. Uh, this is the design assumptions. We'll use supply of 230 volt and uh, a firing angle of 30 degree and a resistive load of 10 ohms is used. So the first step is to determine the amount of average output voltage that is there. Uh, one of the most important steps while substitution is uh, VM should be substituted as 230 into root 2. So be careful with that step. Once that is done, we'll be able to find out the average value. The next step is to determine the RMS value of output voltage. This can be done by substituting the values over here. Uh, one of the most commonly made mistakes is that you have to keep your calculator in radians mode um, apart from that if you're not keeping it in radians then you have to convert into radians while calculating in the formula one of the most commonly uh, involved thought process is how do you enter firing angle as alpha is equal to 30 degree in pulse in retro it is in MATLAB everything is available in seconds and not in degree so we have to convert it into uh, seconds so the process involved is we are using a supply frequency of 50 hertz so the reciprocal of it will give you 0 0.02 seconds that is for one complete period so for one complete period there is 360 degrees so 360 degrees is equated to 0 0.02 seconds then 180 degree is equated to 0 .0 one seconds so one degree corresponds to if you say if you calculate uh, you will be getting 5.55 into 10 power minus 5 seconds so 30 degree uh, if you have to find out the firing angle the time corresponding to it is multiplied with 30 uh, into 5.55 into 10 power minus 5 you'll be getting it this value should be entered there um, as an input in pulse generator so keep this as a note uh, this is a very important step so once this is done we can go to MATLAB and uh, get the simulation started all right, here we are. So this is a Simulink library browser. Uh, search for it. Uh, I mean, open it, and then you can get started with uh, searching the components over here. First thing that we need is an AC voltage source. So search for an AC voltage source. You'll be getting it. So add this block. Uh, next thing that we need is uh, a thyristor that is uh, used. So usually you can also use a thyristor bridge, but I am using individual thyristors uh, because that will give you a better understanding of the entire process uh, as how you individually usually fire the thyristor so that's the reason why we'll do that um, next step is uh, we need a pulse generator to fire like to trigger the thyristor so we will be searching for it and add this block as well um, once that is done uh, we need uh, a series RLC branch uh, we can later change it to a resistive load so we will add this block uh, this is a series RLC branch at this block uh, so we need power give block uh, this is one of the important blocks if you don't have this simulation will not run at all this is because of the discretization process during uh, simulation uh, taking place so we need a voltage uh, measurement block uh, so add that uh, as well so we need uh, an rms value indicator so uh, search for mean you will get both mean and rms we need average value and rms value of output voltage so we'll be searching for both of them uh, so it's taking a little little bit longer here yeah so one of the most uh, commonly uh, made uh, mistakes is we are not supposed to use this RMS value this is for a different uh, purpose we have to scroll down a little bit use this RMS value add this block and add this block mean value so don't add with respect to phasor or variable frequency we are not using that once that is done we need a scope to see the output waveform to for a visual indication of how the output waveform looks like uh, we also need a display in order to uh, display the rms value and the mean value so we need that so we will this is the display block add this block you can add it twice because we need two uh, blocks as such so once this is done we have all the components let's place it according to the position that they are supposed to be uh, and then uh, we can enter the values of each and every component that is used so we need an ac voltage source we are using four thyristors uh, and it should be in the upward direction um, so we're connecting it 
uh, like we'll be copy pasting each of them in this fashion uh, place it uh, in the form of a bridge uh, so that uh, it will be convenient for us to easily connect them so that's the main purpose so one of the most important steps is to uh, disable the measurement port for each of them uh, we're not using it uh, just because of uh, no measurement criteria involved with respect to these thyristor bridges so once that is done uh, we using a resistive load so um, rotate it and uh, choose, this, uh, choose it as a resistive branch and its value is supposed to be 10 ohms. Select uh, 10 ohms over here uh, and then uh, we can get started with uh, connecting these uh, circuit. So we'll be uh, closing the circuit in the form of a bridge over here. Um, so so we are supposed to enter the input parameters uh, in the pulse generator so we'll be setting it to 0 0.01 seconds for half cycle so be careful with this step as i already mentioned uh, with respect to the calculation portions uh, for 30 degree what is the value uh, that it corresponds to so we have 1.665 into 10 power minus 3 so we'll be entering that according to our calculation once that is done uh, we are using a supply voltage of uh, 200 and 30 volts so one of the most commonly made mistakes over here is we have to enter 230 into root 2 that is the rms value that is 325.26 volt so enter that the frequency is set to 50 hertz we're using that so uh, once that is done uh, we can uh, get started with the connection portions uh, according to the circuit diagram so uh, the resistive value is already indicated so connect it across the load and uh, we will be uh, connecting this across this portion uh, of the bridge so connect the AC supply a pulse generator is used uh, are connected to the same gating block because the AC supply will automatically turn that off uh, during the negative half cycle so there's no issues with respect to that um, so we are connecting a voltmeter across the resist load so connect it across this branch and uh, we are using an RMS value we are using an RMS value block and uh, we are also using a mean value block over here to measure the average value keep these displays accordingly one of the most uh, important steps is to change the fundamental frequency in these blocks otherwise we will not be getting the exact value we will be changing it to 50 hertz according to Indian standards and connect it to the display accordingly uh, the overall uh, voltage should be displayed in the scope so we will be connecting the scope over here so uh, let us reduce the time period uh, of the, the runtime of the simulation to 0.1 seconds because these are usually static loads so we don't have uh, such a huge amount of uh, simulation time required so once that is done we have already entered uh, the required parameters we can get started uh, we will run this so as you can see from our design we are getting 224.9 volts and an average value of 190.9 volt this is approximately the same like one of the most important thought processes we are having few drops across thyristors there are four thyristors so there will be uh, drop across two thyristors uh, in series with them so there will be uh, a minute amount of deviation from the theoretical portion but these are not ideal switches in MATLAB so that is the important step with respect to different uh, simulation tools that are used so this is the output waveform that we are getting as you can see both positive cycle and negative cycle it will wait for a firing angle of 30 degrees and then it will so that's it for today uh, if you have any questions please do uh, write it down in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thank you